Hey, how you doing guys? Uh, I want to do an update video for the uh, newer Color Finale and Color Finale Pro 2. Now, uh, from my first video, I missed uh, a couple of features and tools, I, so I definitely want to do an update on this, some of which I really like. So uh, we're here in uh, Final Cut Pro 10 here. Uh, applied, we already chose our different shots and uh, applied the um, plug-in. So I love that they, the fact that they put more tools into the inspector rather than the pop-up window uh, definitely makes it a lot more um, faster uh, to access all the tools right in the inspector. So we're going to go over some of them. Um, of course, color management. Uh, you can uh, make your couple of choices here. Regular video. If you use log footage. And what I like about this is assume log, it automatically knows what type of log footage from whatever camera and it it automatically applies the LUT I guess to correct it uh, before you start grading um, or you can use a input LUT to fix your log footage as well um, have an option for that now um, use ACES I was kind of excited about um, it's a way you can uh, color match cameras as well among other things unfortunately I don't like the implementation as much. Um, it's camera specific, so you have to go in here and choose uh, what camera. And the, the selection is not a whole lot. It's mostly uh, Canon C300. It will work with my camera, um, a Canon C100, which the sensor is very uh, similar, so it will work. Uh, fortunately, using other cameras, my other cameras are not supported. so matching uh, the different cameras in, in ACES color space doesn't really work very well. And then here you simply choose your uh, output color space. Now I think uh, the way things are, uh, for instance DaVinci Resolve does it much better. It's not camera specific, it just automatically knows the type of footage and it's great for color matching cameras together. And it was, uh, did it much much better I think. But it is what it is, so uh, we're going to go ahead and set it back to assume video. Um, so yes, you can use this. Um, most of the Camelon use tools, you can set exposure, contrast, white balance, and all that. Um, now, what I love, they added in here, and I don't see this feature in many other video editors or plugins, is contrast. Uh, yeah, you can throw up a um, curve, color a correction curve, and then do a simple S curve to fix um, contrast, but it's more it's more time consuming, and you have to be more precise. Of course, if you do want to set more precise contrast, you can do that with an S curve. But I find this much faster, and it works just as well for me. So you have a contrast slider, and you can add contrast. And the cameras I use tend to be desaturated anyway, and I definitely almost all every time you need to add contrast such as um, log footage from Canon C100 and also a custom picture profile from my Canon XF100 so you simply just can use the slider set your uh, contrast just like so um, it's a great addition I use it all the time so I'm glad they put that in there and then you can also set the pivot point at what point uh, that the contrast effects inside the video as well and then you can uh, move it around. In this case, um, I like you can move it to the left and it uh, also lightens up the picture. As usually adding contrast will darken it a little bit more. You can do things like white balance, uh, temperature and all that, but I prefer to use the pop-up window for that anyway. Uh, something also new as well is they added a sharpness lighter, uh, which is much better than Final Cut Pro 10's um, sharpness effect. Uh, I believe it's more well implemented and uh, does a better job, much better job than the uh, Apple's version. Okay, for this next section we're actually going to go into, oh, before we do that, just to show you the pop-up slider right here, which is resizable by the way. Just to show you, we'll throw one up and then you can go in here and increase the tools if you need so. And also 
they implemented um, your LUTs inside this pop-up window instead of having a third window pop up as well. Oh, my voice is going out a little bit. Sorry about that. And you can also group them together using uh, a group folder. So you, if you have a lot of adjustments just for exposure or whatever, you can now group them together, which is very uh, a great feature to have, in my opinion. Okay, we're gonna uh, switch shots here to show you some more tools. Um, I prefer to use this one right here. Also what they implemented, which I love as well, uh, with the image analysis. I'm going to show you this first before I go uh, go to that. They implemented false color. Now I've never used false color before because I had nothing like field monitors often use false color. Um, none of my field monitors have false color on them or video editors. But it is a nice addition if you want to use that for maybe setting exposure. Um, you do, ha do have that option right here. Um, this is one thing that I love in here and I haven't seen a lot of video editors have this. Is the isolate you can isolate certain sections for your video scopes if you want to isolate for instance skin tones and is concentrate on that and but it takes a lot of time to set it up in video editors you have to make a separate mask put it in there and then you have to delete it afterward for each shot it's very tedious and time-consuming but here you can just go to the isolate feature and you can select uh, whatever shape you need. In this case, I'm going to use Eclipse because uh, I'm going to use it for skin tones on the face. And you simply resize it and then just put it ever, wherever you want. In this case, the face for skin tones. We're going to go ahead and set this up for video scopes um, for your vector scope. As you can see, there's the uh, skin tone line right there. And it is off. It's uh, setting toward the uh, yellow. And as you, as you can see, the, the picture kind of has a yellowish tinge to it anyway. And this is probably due to because it's right next to a window. Uh, so the sunlight's putting a yellowish tinge. And it is a, um, using colored glass, which throws off all kinds of uh, tinges, I guess. And it's just not for the skin tones, the whole picture. But I definitely wanted to show you the isolate, where you could isolate uh, skin tones and other parts of your picture. And this is great. They also have another tool, which is, uh, of course, they had it in prior versions, which is the uh, vector tools, which is great for setting skin tones as well with the uh, <coughs> the red and the yellow. It's just to show you, we're going to uh, fix the uh, yellow tinge problem within the uh, vector scope right there. That's pretty good. And you can also do yellow if needed. And oops, I think I kind of messed that up a little bit. Um, that looks pretty good right there. And that definitely fixed the yellow tinge problem. Love the vector tools, uh, great addition. So I want to definitely, oh, I'm going to go over uh, film emulation as well, real quick. I think a lot of people were thinking this is just regular film grain. Uh, you know just another new feature but I think um, the company ground um, let me see was that uh, color grading central said that it was primarily for faster frame rates and or maybe even action something with fast action in it that the brain thinks that it smoothed out the film emulation and supposedly this is what it was primarily designed for but I'm sure you can use it for regular film emulation for any type of video as well. I haven't played around with it a lot yet. I'm still working on the film emulation. Now there's probably some better ones out there such as Film Convert. Gives you a lot more um, options and different types of film emulation where this one's more basic but it does get the job done and if you don't want to go out and pay for a separate plug-in which is probably another at least 100 to 140 dollars depending I guess what you get. I think Nitrate's the newest version for film convert but it, it is included with um, color finale pro or color finale I think it's the pro version you have to have the uh, film emulation so I definitely wanted to show you that as well and here of, of course I didn't forgot to mention you can take your isolate out once you're finished with your um, um, isolating certain section for color correction 
So uh, I want to show you the, some of the new features that I found within there that I missed the first time. So thanks for watching and see you guys later.